We're going to move on to our last candidate, but last but certainly not least, Senator Kim David, good friend of, of many to the business community. Uh, Kim David, as you know, is a small business owner from Porter, Oklahoma, with 12 years of experience serving as state senator. She was the first woman to, in state history to be named Majority Whip uh, and Chair of the Appropriations Committee and Senate Majority Leader. So she's gotten a few things done and uh, broke some barriers while she's been in, in, in the Senate and is uh, running for Corporation Commissioner. Senator, really appreciate you being here. Hey, thank you, Chad. I appreciate you guys having me on. You bet. All right, I want you to finish this sentence for me. You're running for Corporation Commissioner because? Because it's the most important job in Oklahoma um, that not a lot of people know about. You know? Um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready to go home and stop serving the people of the state of Oklahoma. Um, I really am. I really do appreciate uh, the fact that I'm where I'm at now and then I've gotten to serve the people of the state of Oklahoma and I'd like to be able to continue to do that. Awesome. Tell us one thing the Corporation Commission regulates that our members would be surprised to learn about. Um, cotton gins. <laughs> some, of your member, some of your members will know about cotton gins, uh, but you know, a, I don't know. I've, I've been on the campaign trail so much telling everybody what, what they what they regulate. I, I hope everybody's heard, you know, from oil and gas, utilities, pipelines, uh, transportation, um, railroads, like I said, cotton gins, your utility rates, you know, those, those gas pumps, um, they regulate those. However, not the compressed natural gas. I did learn that. <laughs> Yeah, I think we, uh, you know, in my past life, uh, I've run a couple of corporation commission races, and I think I had some make-believe Chad statistic, but I think it's probably not far from the truth. It's like 80% of the commerce of the state of Oklahoma is regulated by the commissioner's office in one way or another, and very few people know that and appreciate really the power and, to your point, the importance mm -hmm. of this position. And so, again, uh, so I think we're lucky we have uh, good candidates like you running. Um, Tell me this, what is your plan for um, really digging in in your first year and learning about the areas that the OCC regulates? And then do you already have a plan on the things you really want to tackle in, on, in year one? Um, I am gathering that plan right now. Um, I, am, I am very interested, um, mostly because of what has been going on in, in the state when, with um, the app, the the utility rates increasing because of winter storm Uri and everything that was involved in that and kind of what led up to that debacle of having natural gas prices skyrocket through the roof and then the fact that we're having to deal with that at the ratepayer level right now. I think it's really important that we get our energy companies on board uh, with our utility companies to come up with good solutions moving forward on how we prevent that from happening. And I think that the Corporation Commission needs to take a, a leading role in making sure that that happens. So I want to jump into that real quickly and I want to really learn and delve into the Southwest Power Pool and all the regulations that are coming down from the federal level that are affecting us here in the state. I think it's, in, it's also important that the Corporation Commissioners themselves take an active role on if, if those regulations coming down from the federal level are harmful to the state of Oklahoma and they're not, you know, they're hurting our economy instead of helping our economy, then we need to push back. We need to know what those are and push back actively on what those policies are. No, no doubt about it. Uh, it's, you know, I think again, you know, you only get as good a government as you engage with, right? And I think if the That's right. what you need is you need input mm -hmm. and feedback and data You've got a great team over there uh, and you got a good mm -hmm. staff. Uh, but again, you need to hear from business leaders. And so I hope they're listening and encouraged, and encouraged, <laughs> by, and encouraged by you. You want to really uh, be an open, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a place for them to be able to engage and listen. Want to remind everybody, 405-818-1939. If you have a question for Senator David, please let us know. We'd love to ask that. Okay, I've got a question that, again, as an appropriator, I keep asking this question, and it's going to make everybody nervous because you don't believe in unlimited budgets. But if you did have an unlimited budget at the OCC, what do you think the, the money would be spent on to make uh, the OCC function more efficiently? If, if money wasn't an issue, what's the thing we need to do at the commission to make it function more efficiently? Oh, my gosh, we need to be as modern as we can be on technology. 
if money was no object, I mean, that's, that's where it needs to be. That's where it needs to happen. First and foremost is making sure that we modernize all of our technology. I, I love technology and I couldn't get my job. I wouldn't have been able to get my job done at the Senate um, as well as be able to run my company back home. If I wasn't connected to my, I watch my iPhone, my iPad and my Mac computer. <laughs> so I'm, I am a technology person because it time is money. And if, you, if you can't modernize that and save people time, then you're not saving them money. So that'd be my first thing. And I think if there were uh, shout outs and rounds of applause, <laughs> uh, you know, icons, anybody in the oil and gas industry would be doing that for you right now. Yeah. Obviously, a uh, very important industry that's regulated there. And again, from my experience, it's been really difficult to get the commission to speed up the technology implementation and they're getting there. It's not a criticism of the desire, but you're right. We do need to have much more uh, efficient use of technology and helping our members work their issues through the commission. So I couldn't yeah. agree more that that would be a hugely impactful expenditure of dollars. All right, so tell me the ways that you think um, your experience in the Senate, you've had to deal with 47 other colleagues and, and mm -hmm. get consensus. You're gonna shrink that down to dealing with two other colleagues. And as everybody knows, you know, you got three commissioners on the Corporation Commission uh, and it takes mm -hmm. two to get anything done. Um, tell us about your thoughts on that and working in that kind of environment. Uh, it's a much, 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 you know, smaller, more, uh, uh, intimate environment. What, what are you going to do to make sure that you have a great relationship with your colleagues and you get things done for Oklahomans? Well, you know, I think I've, I've learned a lot over the last 12 years and how to deal with personalities. Um, and some personalities can be more difficult than others. Uh, but it's all about building relationships. It really is. And it's, it's also about remembering that, that the most important thing is to stay issue driven. It's all about the issues and it's not about personalities. And I think I've been pretty good about with learning how to do that in, in the building that I was working in the last 12 years at the Capitol, that when someone attacks me on an issue, they're not attacking me, they're, they're attacking my stance on that issue and to not take it personally. So um, I'm, I plan on, and I may have to remind myself of that a lot while I'm in that job, but I've had to do that with this one too. So I, I feel like it's a strong suit of mine though, that I can do that and I can walk away and, and I can, the next day, you know, I, I have a saying here that my, my biggest enemy today will be my friend tomorrow on an issue. So it's all about keeping those relationships strong and staying on task of what the real issue is and not personality. Yeah, I agree. It, it's an interesting body in the sense that uh, for those of you that don't know, the, the commissioners really can't have a lot of interaction uh, outside the courtroom. And so it makes no. communications very <laughs> difficult. And, you know, the collaborative environment you've been in the Senate, you don't, you don't get to do that. You don't get to go just sit in an office and hash it out. You got to do it out in public. And so, That's true. Uh, you know, there, there's a study done in, in years past. We probably need to dust it mm -hmm. off about ways we can improve that. But, but I agree. I think uh, coming in with the right attitude and, 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 and trying to be collaborative is going to be the way that uh, you're going to be successful. We really appreciate your thoughts on that. We got about five minutes left. And um, I, so I want to remind everybody, if you've got a question, shoot it to me. But one of the questions I did want to ask you about, which is a big deal and a priority for us and a number of our members is, you know, really uh, deploying broadband broadly across the state. You know, mm -hmm. one of the ways we're going to be able to be economically competitive is to have broadband access in every nook and cranny of the state of Oklahoma. Give us your thoughts on the commission's role in that and its importance. Um, and thanks for asking that because I've worked on it some um, this last year here in the Senate with, with all the ARPA money that's coming down. We took a very active role in making sure that, you know, first we had to figure out where we had holes in our broadband here in Oklahoma. It may surprise people to know we had holes here in Oklahoma City, right in the middle of the city. You wouldn't think that you'd have holes in broadband here, but, but we do. Um, it tells us the same way. Um, I lived... I lived it in reality during COVID with where I lived and I'm not that far from Tulsa and yet I would usually have to pack my computer up and go to McDonald's to be able to run business of the state because I didn't have good internet at my house. So, so it was very frustrating it, you know, firsthand. So we did, we spent a couple of million dollars mapping in the state of Oklahoma where we needed broadband, where our holes were 
And I think the legislature and the, and the corporation commission are going to have to work hand in hand in where those dollars go, those ARPA dollars go to help us. Because um, you know, it's, it's an expensive proposition. I know we have a lot of different groups that are are working on it. I've got um, co-ops that are putting in broadband as well as the telecommunication companies that are doing it. Um, so you, you've got a, a lot of different sources working on it, but anything that we can do to work hand in hand with those companies as well as the legislature to make sure that we can help cover those holes, then, then we've got to do that. You're, you're muted, Chad. <laughs> It's terrible that you had to tell me. I was like, <laughs> Sorry. I, I try to mute it just in case I make noise and then I forgot to do it. But I, you know, one, one quick example, and it just, it's, it's funny because it's become real to me is I've got a little cabin in Shawnee and I had uh, CVEC fiber laid a broadband fiber line out there and it, I had faster service there than I did in Edmond, you know, and so it's oh, yeah. just really interesting. And so that was encouraging for me to think it's possible and we need to make that investment and, and we need, you know, that kind of speed and access all over the state of Oklahoma, particularly as we our you know, economy mm -hmm. gets more mobile. All right, I want to I want to end with this. We've got just a couple minutes left. I want to ask you a different way of asking this question. So what's your motivation for running? What, what's the what motivated you to run for this office? Um, what motivated me to run for this office was about a year and a half ago. Um, I had a friend come to me and, and ask me what my plans were once I left the Senate. And I said, well, yeah. I got my real estate license. I've got my company. I'll just, you know, I, I guess I'll go back and, and you know, ramp back up. And, and she was like, man, I wish you'd take a look at the corporation commission. And um, it got me to looking at what all the corporation commission does. And then we had um, all the, all the hearings on um, what we were going to do with securitization. And then I got involved with the hydrogen task force and, so it was like everything kind of started lining up, right, in a very timely fashion as to like, you know, maybe maybe I do need to look at this and maybe I can still be um, useful to the people of the state of Oklahoma. And Chad, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I could be effective. I feel like with my background, um, having a degree in petroleum geology, my background in the Senate, my business experience, I think I've got some good qualifications that um, that I can bring to the table. And then I feel like I've got a really strong work ethic that I can also bring to the table and, and be effective in this job because it is, it, like, this are, these are pocketbook issues, my pocketbook too. So I want, I want somebody and it's gonna do a good job just like everybody else does. So that's my motivation is to make sure that it's done right and it's done well. and. I love my state. I really do. And, and I want to see everybody here in the state be able to prosper. Perfect ending. Senator, really appreciate your time. Thanks. And again, sincerely, thank you for your service in the Senate. And thank you for your willingness to serve again in uh, the Corporation Commission role. Wish you well on the campaign trail. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good talking to you. You as well. I want to thank all the candidates for participating today and our members for jumping on, our local chamber partners that tuned in. We hope you learned something about the candidates. Uh, August 23rd is the election. Uh, we want you to be informed as you head to the, uh, to the polling place and to the ballot. Uh, we have one more of these with the other four candidates that are on the other, that are the opponents of the four we met today. That'll be next Friday, same time uh, at 10 a.m. for part two. And we hope to see you there. Take care.